Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna be looking at Quaka, which is a text editor extension. I'll be using the VS Code version, but you can also install Quaka with Atom and Sublime Text, and I believe some other text editors as well. And it's basically like a JavaScript scratch pad that allows you to do really quick testing and prototyping. It's quicker than logging something out and having to run the file or using your browser dev tools or something like that. It's also great for practicing algorithms and for learning purposes. So I'm gonna just kind of show you the features, give you some examples, show you how it works. Now there is a community version, which is the free version. There's also a pro version and the pro version gives you some extra functionality. I do have the pro version installed, but I'll be sure to point out certain features that are only with the pro version. And the personal pro is $50, which is like a single user license. So let's jump into VS Code, and the very first thing you wanna do, obviously, is install it. So if you go to extensions and you search for Quokka, which is Q-U-O-K-K-A, -K -K and you'll see this Quokka JS, so you just wanna install that. And then you can go ahead and do a Command Shift P or Control Shift P. Just type in Quokka, you'll have some different options here. So you can create a new JavaScript file to work in, which is what we're gonna do. We can also create a new TypeScript file. It is compatible with TypeScript. You can run on save for a current file if you already have a file open or start on current file. So there's different options here. I'm just gonna create a new JavaScript file. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice down here, I have this output console. This will kind of tell me what's going on, if there's any errors or anything like that. So I'm just gonna do some simple stuff here and you can kind of see how this works. So I'm gonna start to type out a variable and right away I'm gonna get this red square if I just put const because obviously this is not um, you know, a valid JavaScript statement. So I'm gonna see an error down in the output and I'm gonna get this red square. So red squares means that the source line has an error. If it's green, that means it's, it's okay, it's been executed. If it's gray, that means that it hasn't been executed. For instance, the body of a function. If you don't run that function, then those lines haven't been executed. And then you have yellow, which means it's been partially executed. So let's go ahead and just say const person and we'll set this to an object and we'll say name and right away it'll say name is not defined until I define it. So let's say name John and we'll say age, um, I don't know, 30 and we'll say location and set that to Florida. All right, so I have this person. Now if I wanna log out something we could do a console log and then we could run the file. However, with Quaka, we can go ahead and just say console log person and it's gonna show me directly in the editor. And if I wanted to just print out the name or age or anything like that, we could do that as well. Also, if we don't want to do a console log, but just wanna kinda of peek in and see what it gives us, we could just type in person or whatever the, the variable is and it'll show us. Uh, also, you might have some really big object or array that you want to look at and obviously it's not going to fit on one line it does show down here but you also have the wallaby tools uh, icon here the quokka icon and this opens the value explorer where you can see line seven right here and it'll show us all the values so the age location name it also gives us the type so this is a number these two are strings and not only that if you wanted to see um, what was in the console object itself. If we just type console, it'll actually show us that. And you can see under functions, so we have the console.log, .info, error. So if you wanted to kind of explore these, these objects. Now I wanna do some stuff with functions. So let's go ahead and create a function. We'll do the cliche add function and takes in two numbers and then we're just gonna return whatever x plus y. And then let's go down here. Now, notice that this is a gray square because this line right here is not has not been executed, right? It's just, uh, it's, it's in the function body, but the function hasn't been called. So if I go ahead and call it, that should turn green. And notice right here, it says NAN, which is not a number. So it'll give me the value up here, the value that's being returned. And it's not a number because I haven't passed anything in. So if I pass in four and five, I'll see nine. So it's just gonna update with whatever that would give me. Okay, I could also, you know, console.log down here if I want to get the value here. Now, let's do some stuff with arrays. So we'll say const and let's just we'll call this nums. And I'm just gonna create a simple array of numbers. We'll say 11, 30, 22, nine, and 14. 
and obviously I could console log what nums is and let's say I wanted to get the last value I could call dot pop that'll show me here so it's really good for like algorithms and stuff like that let's say we want to add them all together we could create a variable we'll call that sum and we could use reduce on this so we'll say nums dot reduce which takes in a function with an accumulator and the current value and then let's say we just want to take the accumulator and we want to add the current value and then we'll go down here and if I just want to see what that gives me it gives me 86 right if I go up here and I change 14 to 10 you'll see that the sum changes down there so it's really good for like algorithms and stuff like that because you're going to be working a lot with filter reduce and map and all these other high order array uh, methods So let's say we want to get all the numbers that are let's do over 20. So we'll just call this over and we'll set this to nums. Uh, we'll do map, uh, not map, sorry, filter. And let's say for each number we want to filter where num is greater than 20. And then we'll go down here and we'll check out what over gives us. So we get 30 and 22. Now, one of the really cool features of the pro version is live comments. So if I want to just see what this is without even having to do anything, I can do slash slash question mark and that'll show me. I can do that here as well. So that can be really helpful. We could also do slash and then asterisk question mark and then asterisk slash. And in here, this will this will show me the value, but I can also Uh, I can do things with this array inside here so I can use the money sign is just kind of a variable for for you know nums and let's say I want to get just the first two I could do dot slice in here and say get from you know get the first two and that'll give me 11 and 30 okay if I want to get 3 11 30 22 and that should update if I change this change that to 10. So these live comments is one of the, the really cool features of the pro version. Now, another really cool thing we can do with the pro version is actually install node modules directly within our Quokka files. So let's say we want to use moment, which is a date formatter. I could say require moment. And if I hover over this, you notice it says can't find module moment, right? Because why would it? But if I hover over this, you see install moment package for the current Quokka file. So if I go ahead and click that, it's going to go ahead and install it so I can now use moment. So let's go. To, actually, we'll just get rid of this stuff here and we'll say const say today's date. And we should now be able to use moment. So we'll say moment dot format. So this will give us today's date. Actually, let's just go down here and console log. Uh, today's date. So that's going to give us that which doesn't look too good. So we could easily format that with moment by passing in. Let's do uh, month. Day, year. Uh, all right. So that'll give us March 8th, 2021. If we wanted to add the time, we could do hours, minutes and seconds and a.m. pretty cool we can just install you know anything we want really into the file and we could even deal with some kind of API with data so let's actually create a, a function here we'll say get user and we'll just make this an arrow function asynchronous takes in an ID of a user and we don't have the fetch API available to us because we're not in the browser environment so we could install node fetch so if I go ahead and bring in fetch from node fetch and that's not going to be found by default so we have to install that package and let's go in get user and we'll say const res set that to await fetch and I'm just going to use the json placeholder api which is like a fake rest api for posts users to do's some other resources um, so that's going to be json placeholder dot typeycode.com slash users slash and then we're going to put the ID that's passed into the function and then to get the data let's say const data and we want to await res.json and then let's just console log the data 
Now these, you can see all the gray squares because these, this is not executed. We haven't called the function yet. So let's call get user and let's pass in one as the ID. And you can see there's get there's some data being logged here. It's, it's down here. You can also see it over here in the value explorer. So we have ID, name, email and address object. So I just wanted to show you that. I mean, if we pass in, you know, two, that'll give us a, a whole new user. And another thing you can do with the pro version is live performance testing. If you want to find bottlenecks in your application and you can do that with the live comment syntax, which is this and then just put a dot in here and you can see it shows me uh, how much time this takes 1.401 milliseconds. So yeah, I mean the, the live performance testing, the live comments and being able to install the modules instantly. That's those are all part of the pro version, but everything else, the you know, the, the live code execution, the live results, the code coverage, the value explorer, these are all included in the free community edition. So um, something that I, I definitely find really useful and I will be using a lot more in the future. In fact, I'm going to be restarting my JavaScript cardio series or I should say continuing the series. And uh, I'm going to be using Quokka instead of just running the file every time we want to see the solution to a problem. All right. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you found this useful and I will see you next time.